Alicia McKenna is back in the starting 11 for her 50th city appearance and 15 year old Shelby McMahon makes her starting debut in what is her third appearance. Rihanna Polisina, a noticeable absence of the match day squad after picking up a knock in training while Kira Myers returns to the bench. Well, a healthy looking crowd streaming through at the home of the Matildas on a warm afternoon in Melbourne. It should be a good turnout and understandably so as well some of the Liberty A-League stars on show this afternoon. So why not get out and support them? Well, the place to be, Grace, is on that Aperol Spritz Hill, isn't it? I mean, what they're doing, as far as the match day experience here at the home in the Matildas, that's what we want to see in the A-League women's, getting the fans along, really letting them feel and enjoy the experience of what's happening around what should be a really great football match. Well, spot on. Wonderful work they do down at the home of the Matildas. The victory home game. Good activations around. And as you mentioned, each victory certainly come into this side, the informed team, as we do see our referees take to the field and both teams making their way out to a healthy applause. Well, it will be a special occasion this afternoon for Melbourne Victory defender Emma Checker, the 28-year-old. She announced her retirement throughout the week and this being Victory's last home game of the regular season. So for the legend of the game, who's been a wonderful contributor, it's fantastic to see her duly recognised with a guard of honour. Yeah, big thanks to Emma Checker for all that she's done for the A-League women and for herself and her teammates, an excellent experienced player. It's sad to see that we're losing her to the game, but she's had a wonderful career. She has the eight time capped Matilda. Will be wanting to go out on a high for her side. But she's in amongst some good company this afternoon. Victory in good form at the moment, standing alongside her teammate, Emily Gilnick, the number nine for Melbourne Victory, instrumental in her side's dismantling of Adelaide last week. She scored a hat-trick, taking her season tally to seven goals. It's just, I'm really pleased to see Em enjoying her football again. After what was a difficult stint overseas in the UK, she had some injury issues, and it's all about that consistency and the mental side of the game for Em, and, and she is consistent, and she looks like she's enjoying her football, which is leading to her scoring some wonderful goals, some absolute worldlies, and it really puts her in contention for the Olympic selection. And certainly makes it enjoyable to watch for all fans. And speaking of enjoyable to watch, Hannah Wilkinson scored a brace last weekend against Newcastle and gave her team the result. Another informed striker at the other end of the park -ish. Well, she's just such a focal point for this Melbourne City attack, isn't she? Both those goals last week came on the right-hand side from Briley Henry. Hannah Wilkinson is at her best when she's playing within the width of the six-yard box. And if she gets that delivery into the box, then she is dangerous and she's clinical in front of goal. Well, taking care of proceedings this afternoon, our referees, a vastly experienced Casey Rybelt, our centre referee for today, assisted by Laura Moyer, Daniel Anderson, and Lachlan Kievers, our fourth official, keeping things under control at the home of the Matildas. Pitch looks an absolute treat. Lovely playing surface. The number 11, Amina Ekic, a fantastic attacking outlet as well for Melbourne City in terms of what she can provide in her creativity going forward. She's been a really good option for the City Girls this season as well. Yeah, and she just fits into that City mould, doesn't she? She's always looking to break through the lines, sit in between the lines, pick the ball up, try and face forward as quick as possible. And she'll be really key for this Melbourne City attack today. And, you know, with Hannah Wilkinson in the middle, with Amina Ekic trying to play those balls into her. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this Melbourne City attack can do. High fives, high tens there for Emma Checker. In the last home game, of course, Victory have another couple after this, but they are on the road. But a special occasion today being Emma Checker's 149th A-League appearance playing across Adelaide, Canberra, City, and now Victory. So she faces her former team today as just last official details being brought together. Casey Rybelt with the whistle ready to go. And there is kickoff here at the home of the Matildas. Round 20 
of this Liberty A-League season and a clash of two titans. The Melbourne Derby is underway. And so it's victory who do indeed come in as the informed side, Ish, of their last few games. They're undefeated in the last eight and have won four of their last five. That's massive. It is massive, isn't it? They're finally coming into their own. I think we were quite critical of them earlier in the season. They were just trying to find their way. Didn't quite look like they had that fluidity of their play. Alex Chidiak coming back into the side. She's back up to full match fitness now, and I think she's been crucial for their attack as well. We're seeing the best of Chids now in this victory side. And again, you've got Emily Gilnick in great form, and when you don't have to just rely on one or two players to score goals, that makes everyone's job a lot easier. I certainly feel as though victory are hitting their straps at the right time. City, on the other hand, despite winning the first fixture between these two sides back in December, well, their recent run of form has been a little bit of a cause for concern. They've won just one of their last six. Yeah, it's definitely not the City way, is it? While they'll, they'll always have that huge amount of possession, we know we see them play out from the back. They always look very comfortable. Even against a high press, they're, that's what they're committed to do, to play this way. And Well, Beattie Goad is a welcome reintroduction back to the Melbourne Victory team. We know she had several weeks away to conduct her medical studies and exams on a mission to become a, doc a doctor so pretty impressive but also very pleasing to see Goad back for victory and she too was instrumental last week and I think we're going to see that a bit more Grace as I just paused as BD Goad won that ball back because that's what City they're going to try and play out I feel victory are going to try and do a high press really put them under pressure but that's where they can also be susceptible to Melbourne victory. If City can break out of that high press, then they're going to have a lot of space going forward. Well, here's the inform Emily Gilnick sizing up opposition. Just a physical battle between her and Carly Rosbach and Melbourne City defender. And it is victory who are almost able to tidy up, but a slip at the back from Tori Hansen and Kayla Morrison. Just doing a bit of tidy up work. She's done well to keep that ball in. But the high press still incoming. Shelby McMahon, the 15-year-old up front for City, the number 12 there. It's her starting debut, just her third appearance. 15 years, Ish. <laughs> that was a long time ago for me, Grace. But I think this is the wonderful thing about our league. We've got this wonderful balance of really experienced players. Emma Checker at the age of 28 and a 15-year-old as well that we're seeing. And, and having that mix of quality, and I don't want to say inexperienced, but these younger players, they're getting senior experience at a very young age which is absolutely amazing well, senior experience streaming forward there in Rebecca Stott just has the ball taken away from under her feet and there is coach Rado Vidasic Dario Vidasic I sorry I should say as play breaks away for City just outside the 18 yard box Rado, indeed, his dad, who he took over from last season. But it's his second year in charge for Melbourne City. I think Dario will be somewhat frustrated with some of the, the results that haven't gone City's way. Obviously, Melbourne City have a very specific style of play, one that they're really committed to. Uh, there has been some challenges within that during the season, conceding goals against the run of play. They do play with that quite narrow three at the back a lot of the time. But... You know, they've, they've got an imprinted style of play and you see it time and time again. And Rebecca Stott is instrumental to that. She's, I think she's got probably the highest number of passes for the Melbourne City team. Well, certainly there's a few City players who dominate the passing stats. Very possession heavy team. So they look to break forward here. Here's Amina Ekic, releases McMahon, the 15 year old, just scuffs off the foot of Tori Hansen, the victory defender, but again, Kayla Morrison looks to settle things for her side, but City at the moment have victory pinned in their own defensive half. Victory numbers behind the ball. You can see their highest player, Rachel Lowe, all well and truly with their own defensive half. Here's Stott, now Gilnick. She can get the eyes up, look for a long sweeping ball forward, releases Goad on the left wing for victory. She's closed down by Briley Henry. And Chidiak with some early touches this afternoon. 
tries to keep play alive for victory, but that's intercepted well by the city defence. And the heavy coming together in the middle of the park. Briley Henry just clattering together there with Paige Zoyce. Zoyce's sixth start of the season. She's had 12 appearances, but struggled to get into the starting side, and that's a heavy coming together of bodies. Yeah, Briley Henry not pull, holding out on that challenge there. And Zoyce, as you say, doing really well, slotting into that central midfielder role as well, really being in, in replacement of Elise Kellen Knight, really being. Well, early opportunity for City is Hannah Wilkinson. That striker's instinct closed down, great pressure put on the ball, and a centering cross, but there will be a victory free kick as Courtney Newborn gets some early touches of the game. Tori Hansen with the ball at her feet can pick out a pass to Emma Checker. Tries to do the same to Gilnick, but only finds the feet of Carly Rossbacken. And City just looking for a way out. Taylor Otto, who too has been instrumental at the back alongside Rebecca Stott. Quite a partnership they've formed, and that's well won by victory. Poked forward. So City can build again. Here's Ross back in. A bit of space in front. Takes the space that's afforded to her. Emily Gilnick having to do some defensive work and does so with a plomb. That clearance a little unconvincing though. The centering ball and Jamila Rankin can tidy up, but just the defensive touches there, not entirely convincing for City. sure about that I thought BD Goad there was no no infringement there it was a little bit unlucky on that part maybe just well no I think that was, I think that should have been play on yeah a few eyebrows raised about that one and a wonderful crowd up at the uh, Aperol Hill <laughs> here's Henry Zoys connecting neatly with Goad that's a nice ball to Rachel Lowe, the team's leading goal scorer. Arm in the air, looking for the early ball over the top. To Dapolonia, it wasn't met. Well, I just thought Dapolonia should have actually just curved her run out there. She started cutting across the city defense where there was so much space just to curve her run out, stay on the shoulder. So they dropped that ball in, but this is where city is susceptible as well. Otto, the likes of Stott, they push in, they want to join in with the attack, and at times they can be at least 10 yards with it into the opposition half, which really leaves a lot of space at the back if Melbourne Victory can exploit that. Well, Courtney, Courtney Newborn has done well to play out there and find Checker in a bit of space. Combines with Gilnick, little drop of the shoulder, puts the afterburners on and tests out the pace against Rossbacken. Centering ball, easily intercepted by Stott, who will help through to McMahon, still alive with victory. And that is just going to go out for a city, a victory throw rather. Checker just looking for options forward. A lot of city shirts behind the ball. Less so victory. That's well read by Davidson. Nice touches to, to evade the on-rushing Alex Chidiak. The 15-year-old on the ball there, Shelby McMahon. Looks composed under pressure. Yeah, wonderful composure there. This is what I do really enjoy watching City play out of this pressure. You can see how many players are always in close proximity, always looking for this diagonal ball as well. Carly Rossbacken's got down this side a couple of times. Yeah, she's looked quite lively moving forward. Carly Rossbacken. And Jeff Hopkins as well, barking a few instructions <laughs> to his side. But this is Jeff Hopkins' time, this end of the season, this pointy end. He, he finds a way with his teams and 
it really speaks to the success he, he has had over the years. The most successful coach in the women's competition. Yeah, well, I think Jeff's, he's just got that incredible amount of experience, so not not to worry too much. I mean, there has been some inconsistencies. There's been some injury worries. I think a lot of the teams in the A-League women have really struggled with some injuries and, and even with transfers later on in the season. But what Jeff has done, and Emily Gilnick said this this week, he remains patient. He believes in his players. He really gives them a voice within the team as well, especially a lot of the experienced players. Well, Ross Becken is one that really had to bide her time with injury. Had a horrible injury run with a difficult foot injury that took a long time to rest and recover. But she's back consistently starting now for City and wonderful to see her playing regular football again after another heavy challenge in the middle. And we'll see our first yellow card for the afternoon. And that one is pointed in the direction of Sarah Dapolonia, the number four for Melbourne victory. Yeah, just as the ball got away from her, a bit of a clumsy challenge there, just out of control a little bit. I think that's the right decision by Casey Rybelt. Just making sure that she doesn't do anything too rash going forward. Well, it's a warm afternoon at the home of the Matildas. 26 degrees. But you wouldn't necessarily know it from the pace this game has started. A City look to stream forward. A last-ditch tackle needs to be put, up, put in and is done so by Chidiak. Good intervention. Well, I don't think it's anything that we didn't expect, is it, Grace, from these two teams? Both really like to play that possession football. Victory potentially tend to want to do that transitional game a little bit quicker, particularly with that narrow back three of Melbourne City and trying to exploit these wide areas. Both teams do like to play with width. You can see even when sometimes Melbourne City, when Rebecca Stott picks the ball up at the back, she'll cut inside and then she wants to play those diagonal balls out to those wide areas, which she's done a couple of times with Carly Ross Backen. Laura Hughes touches in the middle of the park, but she's got close company with Chidiak just nipping at her heels, forces a backwards pass. Ultimately possession back with the feet of Stott. Chips a little release pass out to Henry. She's forced backwards by Goad. Well, that's a poor giveaway there by Briley Henry. Victory looking to mount a case. Rachel Lowe slipping in, oh, attempting to slip through a ball to Emily Gilnick. It wasn't too far off as well. Yeah, unfortunately, they came off Em's Gilnick's heel there because she was in, made a nice little reverse run, cut back across, make the angle easier for Alex Chidiak to slip that ball in. Just a slight giveaway and one there too as Carly Rossbacken tries to thread the needle and Paige Zoyce positioned well, picks up for victory. Well, the oncoming Hannah Wilkinson, she's done that on a few occasions, just putting pressure on the goalkeeper, forcing a long range kick out from the 18 yard box. And you can see City really are trying to win it back up high in their final third. Yeah, that's another principle of play, isn't it? As soon as when you've got so many people around the ball, when you do have possession, as soon as you lose it, it means that you can really hunt that ball down. It tends to be within the six or seven second range that you want to try and win that ball back, stay at a high intensity. If that doesn't happen, then just take a breather and regroup. A little room for improvement on the passing accuracy for the afternoon. City's pass is just sticking a little more at the moment than what we're seeing from victory. And here's Victory trying to mount a case forward. The ball through to Rachel Lowe, but the, the run is tracked well by the very experienced Rebecca Stott. Of course, Rachel Lowe, the leading goal scorer for Victory this year. Ten goals, double digits to her name, having come across from Sydney FC last year. And what a season she is having. Yeah, she'd be really enjoying it, wouldn't she? Rachel Lowe in that central forward position really is a focus point for Melbourne Victory. Their penalty taker as well. She's... She's pretty reliable when it comes to that, but she'll be enjoying this. And especially having now Alex Chidiak in better form, getting back up to match fitness, and obviously M. Gilnick on that right-hand side feeding her in. Oh, 
Well, City just streaming forward. That pass a little loose, a little long. Well, 15 minutes have ticked by and we've seen a fairly transitional game at the moment. Yeah, both these teams really wanting to keep possession, really wanting to, to control the tempo of the game as well. This is where we see the City defenders, Otto stepping in, trying to affect the play, get those one-twos and those overloads. Chances forward for City are just being nipped away at the moment by victory. No clear-cut shots we've seen yet. And still, Wilkinson pressing high, putting Newborn under pressure. The release pass just finds its way over the sideline. Yep, and I don't mind that by Courtney Newborn. Different approach to maybe that you'd see Melbourne City who would potentially try and play out from that pressure. But really nothing bad in not taking any risks in the first 15, 16 minutes of this game when it's been so evenly matched. Well, certainly both sides just gauging the temperature of the match, feeling each other out. Nine final third entries apiece. That speaks to the transitional nature we're seeing so far. Here's Henry. McMahon. Out wide to Ekic. Just sizing up Checker. Drags onto her left, gets the cross into the box. It's a good ball. Just flashes across the face of the goal. It needed something, anything, a touch from a City player. That's a nice move from Amina Ekic. And they've got a corner out of it as well. Love that positivity of Amina Ekic standing up Emma Checker here. Nice little couple of step overs going down towards the byline, cutting it back in. Maybe just a slight touch from Courtney Newborn. Hannah Wilkinson was in and around there poaching. Could have potentially slid in, but it looked like maybe Newborn got a slight touch just before she got there. Well, vital touch if so. Ekic to take for City, but there's a whistle interrupting play and it's coming from a quick chat from Casey Rybelt to the 15 year old. <laughs> Love that. I mean, look at all these numbers around Courtney Newborn. Could probably put my money on where they want to put this ball. Delivery into the box. It's a good one. Nestles on the roof of the net. A little too narrow, ultimately, from Ekic. But she certainly has a good set-piece delivery on most days. It definitely looked like they wanted to put pressure on Courtney Newborn, crowd her out, put a lot of players around, see what she's like in the air. Just a bit too much curl on that one. And the keen eyes amongst us would have spotted Rihanna Polisina and a couple of other City players just behind the corner flag taken there of course Polisina not in today's squad due to a knock she picked up at training throughout the week so she's not been risked but we did see her heavily strapped up while the players were out doing warm-ups here's Davidson now back to Otto now Henry looks centrally to Hughes who helps on well and City just get themselves out of a bit of pressure. Pass from Ross back and finds Ekic, who drives inside. Nice slipped ball through to Wilkinson, but Morrison is up to task as she so often is for victory. Yeah, and victory have looked pretty organized at the back there, playing with that back four, trying to stay nice and compact. And Wilkinson really is that focal attacking player for Melbourne City. Always gets through a lot of work rate, loves hunting the ball down, keeping that high press on. And with Amina Ekic behind on that left-hand side, you know, they could be dangerous if, if victory don't stay nice and compact at the back. But both teams looking very composed. I well, certainly haven't been without some half chances early on. But victory just struggling. That's a nice, tidy turn from Laura Hughes. How about the agility on that one? Here comes Amina Ekic again, driving in the 18-yard box, tries to afford herself... A little bit of room for a shot, but can't do so before that's knocked away by victory. But still, City are on the charge. And Hughes 
has no choice there but to turn backwards. Yeah, would have liked to see Amina Ekic go on that left-hand side again, cut outside like she did in that previous run. There was definitely space for her to do that. Well, how quickly things turn around. Gilnick streaming forward the pass. Betty Goad was an option. Rachel Lowe, perhaps the lower percentage one, but she did go for the leading goal, goal scorer in Lowe. But don't, don't turn away because City are back streaming back into their attacking half. And Ekic is enjoying herself here. Cheeky nutmegs on Emma Checker and she streams past Apollonia. The centering ball is cut off by Tori Hansen. Out for another City corner. Yeah, I'd love to see that again from Ekic. Wonderful play. As you say, cheeky little nutmeg on Emma Checker there. I like it when she takes that little touch inside and then drives to the outside with her left foot, trying to get those crosses back across goal, make it difficult to defend. Defenders hate running back towards their own goal when that ball's coming across the six yard box. Well, Ekic again, the corner taker. One arm in the air. Again, lots of numbers crowding. Goalkeeper Courtney Newborn. Ekic, driven ball into the box, evades everyone and goes as far as Laura Hughes who has Stott for support. Stott, eyes up, cross into the box, nodded away. And this time, scooped away to the relief of the victory defence. Still, City, with possession, can look forward. Ekic has been lively in this opening 20 minutes. Davidson links up with Wilkinson. She turns into a a wall of victory players and Chidiak can combine with Gilnick. Returns the favour to Chidiak. Being chased down by Ekic is brought to ground and Casey Rybelt will whistle for that one. It will be a victory free kick. Yeah, have a little think about it. Casey Rybelt before she made the decision. I mean, Ekic has got a yellow card for her troubles as well. I mean, Chids did really well there. Just trying to get her body. Knew that Ekic was chasing her down. Just getting her body between the ball and the player. Enticing the foul from behind. Well, second yellow card of the afternoon. I mean, Ekic, the 24-year-old. But it is a free kick for victory. And check her to take off the chest of Gilney. Read well by Henry. Good physical battle between these two. A free kick, this time in the favour of the Melbourne City team. Yeah, great play by Briley Henry there. Really like both teams, as soon as they're trying to break out of that pressure with the ball at their feet, they're really trying to break through the next line of defence and affect the play, draw those players in so they can get those little one-twos and continue that momentum up the pitch. Stop getting things underway for City. Nice pass to find Hughes in a bit of space. She looks inside for Ekic. Henry's continued her run. Has Hughes underneath. Ops for Ekic. Nice ball. Ekic, first time ball into the box. Scooped away. D'Apollonia just holding the ball up well, using her body cleverly. But again, this left-hand side, each for Melbourne City, is looking quite a good prospect. Yeah, I just love that nice little ball in between the players from Rebecca Stott into the midfield. A nice quick turn. So having that awareness of what's around you. Can I face forward? Where can I play? Some nice little combinations down this left-hand side. And, you know, that's something Emily Gilnick for the victory. She won't want to be defending all, all day. As much as she can get through the work rate, she wants to be further up the pitch. And at this stage, Melbourne City just starting to get on top with those possession stakes. A clearing ball from Checker, but only into a well-organised city defence. And the triangle at the back between Stott, Otto, Hughes, always there to tidy up. Yep, we see this time and time again, and Hughes in that midfield, just offering, making sure she's always an option there so she can bounce out. You can see controlling the tempo again, really using the whole width of the pitch as well to drag the Melbourne victory and make and create spaces to attack. Well, Casey Rybelt 
breaks for the first drinks break of the afternoon. We mentioned warm conditions at the home of the Matildas in Melbourne today. As both sets of players jog over to get some quick fluids and cool down for just a couple of minutes. And it has been a fairly physical encounter this opening 25 minutes. A couple of moments of late contact. We've seen two yellow cards, one apiece for each side. I think what it's also been is two very good teams who are taking a very measured approach to 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 this match. Both know that if they go chasing things and they make the mistake, then because the opposition are so good at that transition play at actually um, breaking on the counter attack that I think they've they're both taking a bit more of a conservative approach. While even though victory started pushing on a little bit, they know that City is so good at playing out from that pressure. So it's been a really good game of cat and mouse here, end to end, very even across all parts. Well, this is the first yellow card of the afternoon and it was Sarah Dapolonia for victory. This is Ekic, who did look really productive on the ball. That was the best chance you've, you'd have to say for City in the first half. That was a fantastic chance. I'm, I might sound harsh here, but I would have liked to see Hannah Wilkinson really throw herself into that, see if she could slide in at the far post. Maybe it did take a little deflection that was difficult for us to see. Chid's doing well, just drawing that foul and and another yellow card given out by Casey Rybelt. Well, there'll be a drinks break in each half. So we've just seen the first of this first stanza. The second will occur in the second half as well. And so as things stand coming into this game, a win for victory would see them leapfrog City in the table. But that may only be for a matter of time, just depending on other results that are taking place under the other games underway for the afternoon a little later on today. So plenty to play for in this top six finals race. Yeah, it's great to see it's so congested at the top of the table, Grace. I mean, Central Coast Mariners as well, Western Sydney Wanderers, only a point apart. This is the type of competition we want. And that's just, that says a lot to the depth of this competition and, and how it's developed over the years that we do have so much quality football on show and, and really, you know, the best of these six teams all jostling for position at the top of the table. Well, jostling at the top indeed as Rebecca Stott looks to scoop a ball over the top. Be a victory free kick. And if City do win this afternoon, they'll go on top of the league table. Again, it may only be for a period of time depending on other results as the day spans out. But you're right, Ish, the fact that it took until round 20 this weekend of the league to have teams mathematically eliminated from finals. In previous years gone by, we've seen that much earlier in the season. That's because there hasn't been as many games, has there, Grace? You know, having that full home and away season, it gives you the proper measure of the teams and, and how they can can deal with the trials and tribulations, the transfers in late in the season, the injuries that have impacted all these teams, and it really shows you a level of resilience across a proper full season. And I think that's exciting to see. I think that that also means that the quality of football is is going up a notch again year after year. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic to see indeed. Of course, the result, Western Sydney yesterday defeating Perth Glory. Did a bit of damage to the bottom end of the table, meaning Canberra United, Adelaide United, Wellington, Brisbane, Perth in a pretty difficult position now, no longer able to make finals. But with really just a couple of games remaining of this season, the top four and top two race is well and truly on. We know there's a top six for the first time this season in the Liberty A-League. And at the moment, it's Western Sydney who are just on the cusp of that table. That's run through well by Dapoloni. A good centering ball into the box. A bit of confusion at the back, and it's a rare touch.
for Melbourne City goalkeeper Barbara. This is just her third appearance. The Brazil women's national team legend is called into action and Dapoloni has done really well there just to evade the challenge. Yeah, she did well. Rebecca Stott just missing that ball in there. Beady go just a little bit too far away at that far post to get that near post run. I think Emily Gilnick as well. Her positioning wasn't quite where it could have been to help out Dapolonia. First time ball in the box from Shelby McMahon. Nodded away by the victory players. Here's Dapolonia doing great work at either end of the park, but that one evades her as City on another charge and Victory just trying to find a way out and they do so through a tidy pass from Paige Zoyce. Searching ball from Beattie Goad is cut out by the City defence. Switch a play from City, Stott on the ball. Now Ross Backham. Hugging the line is Ekic, and McMahon's done well. Hanson, the American, just trying to find a way out. Ekic can find Davidson in space, who drives into the 18-yard box, drops it out to McMahon, who is in an offside position. Yeah, frustrating those when you've got that build-up play. Shelby McMahon can see right across the line there. Got to make sure you stay stay on side. She's in such a good position. Just interested to see if there's a little bit of a change of formation for Melbourne Victory. Dapolonia seems to be coming on this right-hand side. And Gilnick looks like she's trying to stay a little bit more central, which I think would be a good thing for Melbourne Victory. I think she's been a little bit lost and has had to do more defensive work than they would like her to have done. She's certainly building on her capacity again is Gilnick, but I'm sure she'd love to leave a bit in the tank for some of those forward runs. Here she is putting pressure on Otto. Victory just starting to pinch in a little. Good numbers forward. And asking the question of City about how they find a way out, and that's all too easy for Melbourne City. Streaming forward, a nice drop of the shoulder from Leah Davidson. As she covers a bit of territory. That touch just slightly letting her down. Rankin stops and props and combines with Beattie Goad. First time ball for Rankin is neat. Gilnick, the informed striker, gets the shot away. Just leaning back slightly over the crossbar. Well, it was always going to be a tough angle for M to have a shot there, but I think she probably knew she was on her own. Not too many people. Dapolonia was trying to get into that far post, but I think this little change of formation with Rachel Lowe and Alex Shidiak just in behind Emily Gilnick playing a bit more of a central role will just start putting a bit more pressure on this Melbourne City back three, four, because at the moment they're not really causing him too many problems when they are getting into that final third. The first time ball as well from Jamila Rankin made life a little difficult for the City defence. Now they can look forward. Helped over the top to Briley Henry, who's done well to keep it in, but Rankin taking no risk. Sees that over the sideline. A couple of deep breaths from Briley Henry. As she waits for a bit of support in the way of a city shirt, finds Wilkinson. Dropped back to Hughes. Now Henry again. Stott pressing forward. Switches the point of attack. To Ekic. We've seen this story before. Ekic dances over the ball. Back onto her right foot. Nice centering cross. McMahon gets the shot away. Rachel Lowe back deep in her own 18-yard box doing some defending work. City still with possession. Henry tries her chances into the box and that'll be nodded away by Hansen for another City corner. Yeah, Amina Ekic is great when she's on this left-hand side. Love seeing her stand players up. A couple of step-overs there. Checked one way, checked the other. And actually had a look up and had the presence of mind to try and pick out a player as well. Keep that ball on the deck and make it easy. It was good defending by Melbourne Victory in the end. They had a lot of players in that central area. Well, Ekic has certainly looked to stand out this afternoon for City. 
course, returning to the side for her second season. Ekic with the corner delivery. Nice ball into the box, knotted away by Captain Morrison. Stott, delivery back into the box, this time away by Hansen. Helped on by Goad. Hasn't been dealt with yet by Victory. Here's Hughes. Little scoop over the top to the chest of Wilkinson. She tries to help on, but does so no such trouble to goalkeeper Newbon. Yeah, it looked like she might have just been trying to potentially scoop that in behind. Otto was still just a little bit in front of her here. Took a little bit of time. Ball just bounced up a little bit. Didn't quite fall for her to get a strike on it with her left foot. Maybe just a bit of indecision there about whether she wanted to hit it or try and dink that ball in for Otto. Well, victory looking to play out. The City remain pressed high in their own attacking half. That's a bit of a loose pass, but it's just evaded the reaching leg of Amina Ekic. Now Goad turns and plays through Chidiak. Down the left wing for Melbourne victory again to Goad. Slips through to Dapolonia. Hughes alert to the danger. Forces victory back. Goad again. Zois. Goad. Drops to Chidiak. Little clip of the heels. Heavy deflection off the foot of Briley Henry and it will be a victory corner. Well, that was some wonderful build-up play all the way back from Courtney Newborn. We thought it was a bit of a dicey pass, playing that diagonal ball out, really stretching the Melbourne City defenders here and they kept probing, they kept possession, they kept moving the ball, playing into feet and Alex Chidiak could have gone down. I appreciate that she didn't go down. They got a little touch and won victory a corner. Well, Paige Zoyce on corner duties, the 20 year old to deliver for victory. Zoyce's corner swatted away by Barbara. Chidiak with the follow up strike. A little too loopy, a little too high. Crisis averted there for City. Yeah, Chids maybe just wanted to test Barbara out. And the Melbourne City goal hasn't been too many real chances for either of these teams. Barbara comes out with a good punch, good touch by Chids, but that's always going to be difficult for her when she's leaning back and away and trying to keep that ball on target. Nice turn by McMahon. Now Ross Backen inside to Ekic. Has space in front, has numbers either side. That touch closed down well by three victory players. They swarm the area as well. They did. I thought um, Hannah Wilkinson potentially could have just held her run and actually stayed on this side. She tried to cut in, you know, for that slip pass, for the straight pass through the defenders, so get it onto her right foot. But what that did, that just dragged all the Melbourne victory players into that same space and, and closed up the space. Well, there's a healthy mix of both City and victory supporters in the crowd. Plenty of City shirts, plenty of victory shirts. Wonderful to see at the home of the Matildas. As victory play themselves out of a bit of, a bit of pressure quite well here. Here's Checker. Dapolonia just gets stuck on the ball. Has another go. Checker, first time ball forward. That's read well by Ross Backen, but it will be a victory throw. Coach Dario Vidicic. Just with a few words of instruction. Another goal kick for City and Barbara in her third start for Melbourne City. And for those not familiar, well, a legend of the game in Brazil. Four World Cups, 35 years old. And what a signing she's been for City. That's an incredible signing. We've had some amazing goalkeepers signed in the A-League women, haven't we? Unfortunately, we've had to lose some of them going back to the NWSL in the US, being called back by their clubs, but there's really been an amazing amount of quality in our goalkeepers this season, and it's really added to the attacking play of the league as well and of these teams. It's so crucial when you've got a goalkeeper behind you that you've got confidence in. They add, they join in the attacking play, and we see it with so many teams playing out from the back. 
Well, of course, Barbara came in to replace the departing Lizanne Prue, Canadian goalkeeper who was City's first choice. We saw, of course, Melissa Barbieri in between the sticks for a few occasions. She too, four World Cups, so not a bad pedigree in the City goalkeeping ranks. Yeah, and it's also just nice to see the quality and the depth of goalkeeping these days. Historically, we've always heard that criticism about the quality of goalkeeping in women's football. Uh, I think we've, we've, we've quietened the critics and because the depth of these, of these players in this position has gone up in the last five or six years. Well, she might be tested here, seen away by Otto. Again, a drop of the shoulder, but that's really well defended there by Henry. And two at the other end of business, Courtney Newborn. Well, she's done really well this season. Four appearances for the Central Coast Mariners as an injury replacement player before moving down to the victory team. Of course, Lydia Williams out for some time with an ankle injury, and Newborn has taken her chances. I mean, we always know how crucial the goalkeeping position is, but in the modern day game, the ability to be able to join in and start that attacking play we've seen especially with our goalkeepers now and the propensity to play those diagonal balls into those wide areas to break out of high presses up around the halfway line and it's such an important part of the game and gives you so much confidence as a team that actually your goalkeeper is a part of your attacking play as well well possession is largely leveled out as the half has worn on nearing the last three minutes of this opening 45 and Alex Chidiak is clipped at the heels. We'll see the third yellow card of the game and that one handed to Letitia McKenna of Melbourne City. Chidiak streaming forward, just slowed down. Yep, love to see that from Alex Chidiak. We'd just like to see her doing it a bit further up the pitch. I think at the moment she's coming from deep areas. She's trying to make something happen here. Just clipped back there. We saw it on this side, on the right-hand side, where she got clipped um, by Amina Ekic as well. But she just needs to be doing that in the final third. Shot away for City, and it's a brilliant strike. Rattles the City crossbar. Not too far off at all. And that came incredibly close off the boot of Jamila Rankin. Oh, what a strike from Jamila Rankin. Just sat up nicely for her. She didn't try and hit it too hard, just tried to get good contact on that. Barbara didn't know too much about it, wouldn't have had any chance, thought that was flying into the top corner. Well, she did well there, Jamila Rankin, just to take her chances. City player offside, a victory free kick. But you're right, that would have stunned Barbara in goal for City. The crossbar just denying that one finding the back of the net. There's Gilney. Good physicality to hold up the ball. Zapolonia. Gilnick again. Stutters a step on the left and gets a strike away, but a few too many city legs. That one's hoofed forward, looking for the run of Wilkinson. Kayla Morrison expertly nods it back to Courtney Noob on that smart. Yeah, good play by Kayla Morrison there. Saw Emily Gilnick. She's scored a couple of worldies, hasn't she, this season when she's come back after injury, where she cuts back in on that left foot and is looking for the far post top corner. You can see she was doing that again, just didn't quite catch it. Ball just a bit, got stuck under her feet. A little unconvincing in the clearance from Newborn, and it fell kindly to Dapolonia. Still, victory under a bit of pressure here. City with numbers forward. That pass cut off by Ekic. And again, Gilnick dropping deep to help with the defensive duties. Just confirmation from that yellow card we saw for Letitia McKenna. As victory stream forward again, here's Goad. Cuts in on her right, back to her left. Goad, delivery into the box. 
had Barbara interested, flashes across the face a goal. And two, we've got confirmation of a yellow card for Emma Checker in some back play. Here's Chidiak, still alive for victory. Nice touches from Lowe, but the second one just escapes her as we've got confirmation there will be three minutes of stoppage time on top of this first half. Well, this battle between Briley Henry and Beatty Goad shaping up to be a good one this afternoon. Otto's pass threads through the midfield and Wilkinson plays in really well. But that centering ball, a little hapless. Yeah, it looks like maybe a little bit of fatigue at the end of this first half with the warm conditions, having the drinks break as well. I mean, this was great from Beattie Goad. Love to see that stood up. That's, you know what, that's what I'd love to see Emily Gilnick bursting into that far post. I think she's back now onto this right hand side so in more of a defensive position i think that's probably just keeping safe keeping calm going into the half time break nice switch ball from Paige zoyce just to relieve a bit of pressure in the middle of the park for victory Betty goad drives forward beats one looks to beat two but here is that battle again between goad and henry Nice pass from Goad, finds Chidiak. Now Rankin again. That delightful shot moments earlier. Here's Lowe, brings it down on her chest, just looking for an outlet, needs some more support from victory, victory players around her. Has no option but to concede a bit of territory. Now Lowe with eyes up. Centering ball is an awkward one. And it's still in, still alive with play just bouncing awkwardly centering ball from checkup now with dapolonia on the edge of the 18 yard box stop driving out and you can hear what the crowd thinks of those challenges just hasn't quite been dealt with by city in their back line and back with barbara the victory have just taken their foot off the gas 30 seconds of play remaining in this stoppage time Davidson threads through to release McKenna driving at victory's defense McKenna onto her left foot touch evades her Tori Hansen will work hard and does well applaud a little high five from teammate there Emma Checker appreciates the hard work from Hansen Well, there's the halftime whistle from Casey Rybelt. As the scores cannot be split at halftime here at the home of the Matildas, not without its chances this opening 45 minutes. But as both teams take a well-deserved break, and after an entertaining first 45 minutes, here it is, Melbourne victory nil, Melbourne City nil. So there were a few highlights that we saw from the first half each, but nothing in the back of the net just yet. No, nothing in the back of the net. Typical derby. It's both teams have been quite even here. Amina Ekic, I really like what she's doing when she's taking players on down this left-hand side, jinking in and out, trying to get that ball across goal. Would have liked to see Hannah Wilkinson slide in there, put her body on the line, try and get a touch on it. This is what Alex Chidiak, we see her doing, drawing the foul in. Amina Ekic getting a yellow card for that. Well, there has been a bit of rough and tumble, but this a nice ball forward through from Jamila Rankin with some tidy touches. The chance from Gilnick, not too threatening. This as well was a yellow card to Letitia McKenna. Yep, which hits as well here. Nice little one too. I like, again, Beatty Goad having a look up. Jamila Rankin, great first touch. I mean, what a strike. Really unfortunate that she didn't get anything from that. Probably the best chance of the half. Barbara completely beaten. Emma Checker with a cheeky little cheeky little grab there on Amina Ekic to pick up a yellow card as well. Well, as we have a look at the halftime stats, Ish, nothing too much separating possession and victory yet to register a shot on target. 
Yeah, it's been a pretty even match. I think the, the statistics tell the story of the game. I think both teams are keeping possession well. They're building up play, but now it's just what they're doing in the final third. Once they get in there, making things more clinical and getting more shots on target. Well, catch your breath, but don't go anywhere. We're off to a short break. We'll see you in just a moment for all the second half action.
Well, welcome back to the second half of the Melbourne Derby between Victory and City at the home of the Matildas. Scores are deadlocked at nil-nil at the break. Plenty of chances in that first half in what was a hotly contested 45 minutes, both in heat and in nature. Ish, talk us through what we've seen. <laughs> So my type of tackles in there, Grace. You know, typical derby players wanting to commit to the ball. I think Alex Chidiak did really well here, drawing the foul, getting a body between the ball and Amina Ekic. Another yellow card. At four in total. And this is this is quintessential Alex Chidiak. Gets the ball, wants to face forward, wants to dribble at players. What I would like to see is Chid's doing that a little bit further up the pitch. But even here, Emma Checker, well, cheeky little one there. And on Amina Ekic, yeah. Of course, I'm sorry, Casey Rybel, but definite yellow card, wasn't it? Well, quick to apologise, that will be a yellow card every day of the week. Plenty of opportunities in players coming off the bench today. I don't think there's any changes just yet as both teams are making their way back to the field. And there is Amina Ekic, who you'd have to say was City's best outlet in that first half. Yeah, I really like seeing Amina Ekic and BD Goad on both of the left-hand sides for their, for their respective teams taking those players on they tend to jink inside then take them on on the outside some good crosses that they put into the box they just need more of their teammates committing to getting in i think emily gilnick was at the far post for one hannah wilkinson on the other side for melbourne city but these two players looking to for both of them to have a big half certainly feels as though something is going to happen when either goad or ekic get on the ball at either end I think that's the whole point, isn't it, Grace, that you want your players in the middle of the pitch actually taking the chance, taking the risk and trying to get on the end of those balls. And I don't think they committed as well as they could have in the first half. Well, two goals this season for the 26-year-old Beattie Goad. She would sure love to add to that tally today as the second half gets underway and at quite a pace streaming forward is Melbourne victory with the kickoff. Jamila Rankin some early touches on the ball. She really grew into the game in that first half. A good shot, ricocheting off the crossbar. Yeah, she was unlucky for that not to go in. Barbara in the Melbourne City goal had absolutely no chance whatsoever. She had a good first touch, hit it in towards the far post. Really, that was probably the best chance of the game, you'd have to say. Well, not too much in the way of clear shots on target, but some opportunities flashing across the face of goal as victory... Look to turn that stat around. Early cross into the box is not a bad one, but it doesn't quite have the whip it needed on the cross. You just see Emily Gilnick in that more central position when Emma Checker did that overlap run, and I think that's really important for the Melbourne victory, not just to have Rachel Lowe in the box, but to have Emily Gilnick around as well, looking for those opportunities and those crosses in. Well, high pressure from victory, squeezing City in, and they've just managed to maybe get out of the press here, but victory is still on the charge. Well done in the middle of the park. As city numbers can stream forward, Leah Davidson releasing the ball to McKenna, cutting back in on her left, interrupted by Rankin. And lots of numbers behind the ball. Just taking a pause to catch her breath. Poked away by victory as they look to relieve the pressure. Here's Rebecca Stott. She'll take the space that's in front. Driving into the midfield. Now Ross Backen. Threading the ball through to Wilkinson. Looking to release the run of Ekic, but the offside flag has gone up. And that was the ball in. Nice little diagonal ball. Macheka was still with her there. The quality of Amina Ekic. Getting those, taking those players on in those wide areas. It was the right idea from Hannah Wilkinson. Well, as mentioned, there's a couple of other fixtures going on this afternoon. We'll come back to that thought in just a moment. Streaming forward now is victory, but the offside flag at that end of things has gone up as well. So as well as this game, the Melbourne Derby. Wellington are hosting Sydney over in New Zealand. And stop listening now if you don't want to know the score at halftime of that one. Sydney have taken the lead 
thanks to a Courtney Vine wonder strike and an own goal from Tiana Jaber, who looks to be. And in the other fixture, Central Coast Mariners in the opening five minutes against Canberra United are two goals to the good. A couple of big results there, isn't it, Grace? Great to see Courtney Vine continuing to be on the score sheet as well. But now City trying to create in a game where they haven't been able to forge many clear-cut chances. Long clearing ball back to Stott. Now Otto, the 26-year-old American. She's played the most minutes for this City team this year, has Taylor Otto. Stott still continuing her run forward, releases Ekic. Looks to get the touch pass check up, but it's managed well by the experienced defender. Ekic again. Little drop of the shoulder, nice move from Amina Ekic. Has numbers in the box, cuts it back, steered away by Jamila Rankin, who was alert to the danger. Still alive, here's Hughes. Interrupted by Checker, and now D'Apollonia runs into a wall of City players again for City. Strike away, it's off the crossbar. There was one in the first half, not dissimilar that in the second. And now, as quick as you like, things turning back around. Betty Goad swivels on the ball and she can drive forward. She's got a few City players to beat. Supporting run coming underneath from Chidiak. Does release Chidiak first time cross. Is blocked by Briley Henry. Well, Grace, we said it, didn't we, at half time. It really is the tale of these two left-hand sides for both these teams. Amina Ekic down that left-hand side for Melbourne City. Got a strike on goal. And then just as quick as you like, that transition play. BD Goad, really positive run. I mean, Amina Ekic did great here. Like, what a strike from that angle. Another one that hit the crossbar. And then within five or six seconds, we're up the other end of the pitch. Very similar part of the field to those crossbar strikes were hit two hands in the air Paige Zoyce with the corner into the box Barbara is up asking for the foul from referee Casey Rybout and just barking a few instructions at her players yeah she's a formidable keeper in goal isn't she Barbara hugely experienced nice and confident you know a lot of bodies we've seen it from both teams actually with these corners haven't we really trying to put the pressure directly on the goalkeeper with a lot of bodies just in and around inside that six yard box right in the center of the goal well victory you can understand why they've scored 10 goals from corners this season the highest in the league city on the other hand not a bad level six goals from corners so something is working for both of these teams on set pieces, but it hasn't quite been the case today. We know that the last time these teams did play each other, City came out the 1-0 winners thanks to a 10-minute Amina Ekic finish. Yeah, there's not a lot between these two teams, is there? And we've seen this time and time again today. As we say, it's a very transitional game from one end to the other. Both teams really treasure that possession. Melbourne City always have have the majority of possession, possession in every single game that they've played. Sometimes we can be a bit harsh on them about how they then convert that into chances and into opportunities to score in the final third. Well, certainly a possession-based team. Players that do like to have the ball at their feet in fact, the four players to have recorded the most touches all season are on these two teams. Rebecca Stott, Taylor Otto, Jamila Rankin, Kayla Morrison, defensive players, really comfortable playing with the ball at their feet. Well now, Victory looking to see if they can fashion a chance. Left-footed cross in from Rankin. 
seen to quite comfortably from Otto. And there's those touches we were just talking about. Really good composure under pressure. Yeah, wonderful touch for Laura Hughes in there. Just to jump, <laughs> dink that back in. Such composure under pressure. And this is what they're so good at. And this is why the majority of those passing statistics are with their defensive players. Now Ekic leaps over one touch through the other. Just gets the ball stuck behind her stride. But she does look almost weightless when she streams through a defensive line like that. Yeah, she's got a wonderful balance about her, being able to change direction with the ball at her feet. Just couldn't quite keep control of it in that instance as well. But as this game, as the team, both teams fatigue in this heat, potentially breaking momentum with a drinks break halfway through this half, you know, that game is going to open up. There's going to be more space. I think we're going to see a lot more of Amina Ekic. Stott, now Ekic. Nivon off her line. Just to tidy up. Well, plenty of football to be played yet, but should these results remain as is, Sydney FC take themselves to the top of the Liberty A-League table. That's intercepted well by Ross Backen. She drives inside, looking for a release pass, runs into danger. It's a bit of an uncomfortable one, but Dapolonia has done well for her side. Early release from Gilnick, but Lowe doesn't quite have the stride and that pass a little too weighty. So Sydney on top of the table at the moment. If this result is to stay as is, Melbourne City in third, Melbourne victory dropped to fifth because as mentioned, the Central Coast Mariners, a two nil lead over Canberra as it stands, have got themselves in fourth position. Oh, what a job Emily Husband has done with the Central Coast Mariners this season. They've really just been building into the season. Now have the return of Kaya Simon as well, who's coming up, experienced Matilda, experienced A-League women's player, scoring goals, has that winning attitude as well. It's just that additional X factor that I think Emily Husband has been missing and, and they're really coming home and finishing the season strong. Well, peaking at the right time. Certainly we've spoken about victory being a team to do that, but they've struggled to create a little today. Chidiak dropping well and truly in her own defensive half. Yeah, and I think that's probably the one thing that you miss when Elise Kellen Knight isn't playing in this team. That real traditional number six position in front of the back four, being able to link the defense into the attack. And that's where if Alex Chidiak isn't getting on the ball, she wants to get touches, so she's getting herself, finding herself coming in a bit deeper just to continue on in the game. Well, it will be our first change of the afternoon. And it's Jeff Hopkins who's turning to his bench. First of all, both Rosie Curtis and Leah Privatelli coming onto the field of play. Sarah Dapolonia taking a well-deserved rest on the bench. High fives from the coach. So Rosie Curtis in her fifth appearance for victory this season. And Leah Privatelli, the 29 year old. This is her 11th appearance. A couple of sets of fresh legs and two attacking minded players in Privatelli and Curtis. So it sends a message what Jeff Hopkins is after. Yeah, we can see Emily Gilnick coming into a bit of more central position there. So a bit of change of formation, try and get Gilnick on the ball a little bit more. She's done a lot of defending today and with the way she's been playing and the, how well she's been in goal scoring form, you actually want her within the within the width of the 18 yard box. And there's the confirmation. Privatelli, just as the squeeze is applied by victory, replacing Dapolonia. And it was Paige Zoyce making way for Rosie Curtis. We speak about a couple of players missing today as well. Of course, the under 20s young Matildas team coming back from their success over in Uzbekistan. The bronze medal around their neck. We'll come back to that point in a second because Jamila Rankin is looking forward early and the idea is right. The cross just evades everyone from both the city and the victory shirt. Still in though, cheeky nutmegs from victory. And that's scooped away. No nonsense defending, setting up for a victory corner. Yeah, nice play by Privatelli. As you say, some fresh legs on there. 
Really trying to get at this Melbourne City attack. They've switched it from one side to the left. Nice little ball in here from Jamila Rankin, looking into that far post area. Bit of a danger area. It was a bit of an awkward one there. Privatelli did well. well. Certainly the injection of energy and fresh legs can be seen. Here's Goad. Scooping it in on the left foot. It's up and under. Not yet out, but there is a clearing header from Henry. Just as far as Rankin. That's a good re-entering ball. Really nice delivery. And Hughes relieves a bit of danger. Now here's Hannah Wilkinson. Does she have the legs to bear down on goal? Alex Chidiak and Rankin working hard to get back into defensive space. And that ball just evades the outstretched leg of Amina Ekic, who otherwise had a good option. Ekic cuts on the left. It is a good entry across the face of the goal again. The second time this afternoon we've seen a very similar play and no goal to come from it. Well, I don't know how they haven't scored there. I thought the ball out wasn't the best quality by Hannah Wilkinson. Meant Amina Ekic had to come back in, but again, really positive. Wants to take the player on, take on Alex Chidiak. Why isn't Hannah Wilkinson diving in at that far post? That is a guaranteed goal for Melbourne City. She'll be really disappointed when she watches that back. And it's just any amount of contact, isn't it? It's just a toe, anything. I mean, with Hannah Wilkinson's stature as well, she would have easily got that. She's got long legs, she's got a big stature. Sliding in at that far post, it almost looked like she just planted her feet, didn't she? Maybe she misread it, that it was going to come back a little bit further, but you have to take a risk there. That was an open goal. Could have been an easy tap-in for Hannah Wilkinson. Well, it was a good break from City. Chidiak and Rankin did well to get back and defend, but Chidiak just lost her foot in and it opened up really well for Ekic. As you mentioned, the ball, not the best quality out to Ekic, but she still was able to create a really good option. That's what we love seeing. She had that composure. She got her head up. She had to look what was on. Saw that Hannah Wilkinson was far post and put the ball into that dangerous area. Well, go it again. Corner into the box. Nodded away by Wilkinson. Check her eyes up with the re-entry. Could have been a dangerous ball, but no victory players chance in the near post run. Barbara's throw out to Henry. Now Otto just around the corner to Davidson. This is a dangerous one. Straight into the hands of Barbara and Emily Gilnick. Well, that opened up very kindly for her. Well, she was under pressure there, but that's where I want to see Emily Gilnick, particularly in this part of the game. Half an hour left in it. She's in a more central position. She's in good goal-scoring form. Didn't quite catch that one. Barbara, a comfortable save for her. But this adds an additional attacking option for Melbourne victory. A bit of tired legs there. Difficult. Davison missed it. Just didn't catch it. You could see she was trying to lift that up and over Barbara into the far post. But positive signs from Melbourne victory. Well, five shots apiece. That's a clever first time touch then from Kayla Morrison. Certainly chances that either side could have taken the game into their own hands, their own terms. Just haven't been quite clinical enough in the moments they have had. Here's Ekic again, driving inside. It's fallen almost to go, but McKenna combines with Henry and again returns the favour. Here's Henry. Drops the ball back to Hughes. Now McKenna. Nice little touch inside. Letitia McKenna. Go goes to ground and City still had the ball. Nice little drag from Leah Davidson. Neat feet, first time shot. And again, doesn't do so much as trouble. Courtney Newbon. Yeah, it was clever play in there by Leah Davidson. Just looked like she wasn't comfortable, confident having that shot on her left foot. Prefer to have played someone in. And in the end, it was a comfortable take for Courtney Newbon. Well, both of these teams are pretty good second half teams, scoring a lot of their goals in the second 45 minutes of play. That first time pass over the top looked as though Ekic had run into an offside position, but it does take a while for Casey Rybelt to whistle. So 
Australia's fourth official, Lachlan Keevers, indicates that Letitia McKenna, whose job's done for the day, and it's a welcome return to the number seven for Melbourne City, Julia Grosso. This is her first appearance since the 20th of January. She's been sidelined due to a calf injury. So almost 60 days she's had to wait, but a really, really important player in City Blue. Dario Vidisic will be really pleased to get Julia Grosso back on the pitch after such a long layoff. She's been so instrumental again, one of those attacking defensive players and just gets through a huge amount of work in those wide areas, doesn't see in fresh legs. And with Amina Ekic on that left-hand side as well, where Melbourne City have looked more dangerous. This is a, a great substitution and to see her back on the pitch. A bit of a half chance for victory. Here's Chidiak. Looks to take a touch around Davidson, but she holds her up well. Now Rankin. Go. A willing runner. A bit of a late challenge from Henry. Loud boos from the fans at the home of the Matildas, but Go to stay to ground for a moment or two. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of an awkward one there. Just her ankle getting caught and Briley Henry as she went down. Well, it'll be a free kick for victory. Good to see Betty Goad back up to her feet. Two-person wall. A little stretch out of that left car for Betty Goad. Mm, be interested to see. I'd prefer a right-footer to take it from here. Grace, I must admit, Emily Gilnick's coming over to have a look at it now. I think that's the right decision. This is where you aim it to that far post and see if someone can get a touch on it, make it difficult to defend. Well, a quick sip of the pickle juice for Beatty Goad. She runs over the ball. Gilnick strikes it near post. Well, not too far off, and that made it difficult for Barbara. Yep, good ball in. Wanted to catch the city defence off guard in that near post area. Barbara did read it well. It was very busy in there. Angle's very tight. Just wanted to lift it up and over. I mean, picked out, got in between those two Melbourne City defenders. Definitely great whip on the delivery from Gilnick. Now Henry, Chidiak marshalling her backwards. So we've ticked over the hour mark into the 66th minute couple of changes we've seen on the victory bench just one from the city bench still nil nil here at the home of the Matildas three points pretty vital at this point in the season Gilnick considers the chase but the bounce takes it over for a city goal kick yeah if you just get the feeling it's going to take either a big mistake or something very very special to break open this game both teams looking pretty composed pretty comfortable defensively had a few chances Melbourne City with that one ball flashing across the six yard box. Hannah Wilkinson at the far post. So it's not like they're not creating the chances. Just not being clinical enough. Still confident playing out in their final third. Nice tidy touches from Laura Hughes. They just do it so well, don't they? Just really nice composure. Well, City throw. Grosso, her first game back since January. Has a little look, considers her options. She's given the space to do so as well. Davidson. Henry turns out. Defended well here by Goad, pushing Henry all the way back. Now Stott can drive forward. Gilnick has a little think about the shirt pull. Stott still with the ball at her feet. Ekic has shifted over to City's right hand attacking side of the field for now. Nice spin and turn by Goad. Really silky play up. Releases Rankin. Just doesn't have a victory target to aim for and that's great defensive work shown by Ekic. Well, a little cute there from Stott but it doesn't come off. 
Ekic can turn and go. Gets her body across Rankin. Has Morrison to beat. Ekic bearing down on goal. Picking a side. Gets a shot away. He's blocked well by victory. Nice little touch by Shelby McMahon, the 15-year-old. Grosso. City with a bit of a spell here. Victory under the pump. Privatelli trying to slow Grosso down. Grosso back to Hughes. Nice little give and go. Hughes on the edge of the 18-yard box. Bodied off the ball. Go. The oncoming pressure of Henry. Brings low into action. Alices, Gilnick sizes up the opposition in Otto, and that's well marshaled by Taylor Otto. I was just going to say how impressive Beatty Goat is. How long did she have out going for a studying to become a doctor and just comes back in and just settles back into this level so quickly? Well, a few changes here. We see Rachel Lowe take her spot on the bench and Ava Brightus the 18 year old for her eighth appearance of the season she'll be looking to make an impact and her first contribution is for the drinks break <laughs> get the water straight in stay hydrated <laughs> well, some quick instruction too from Jeff Hopkins and it hasn't been a second half without its chances no, there's been some decent chances. I mean, Ekic always looking dangerous and always looking to make something happen on this left-hand side for Melbourne City. Anna Wilkinson there at the far post, just planted her feet. Really would have liked to have seen her slide in. It may, she just wasn't on the move. It was just a little bit static there. Emily Gilnick picking up from a mistake while City were trying to play out from the back. I mean, that's where we want to see Emily Gilnick in the centre of the park. Davison here, tricky, nice. Just wasn't comfortable trying to get that on her left-hand foot, left foot. And in the end, it was a pretty comfortable take for Courtney Newbin. And so both teams get some fluids in, get the towels to try and cool things down. Instruction from Jeff Hopkins. As we tick over into the final 20 minutes of play. Well, I mentioned that both sides are a good second half team. City, in fact, have failed to score a first half goal in 11 of their 20 games yet they still sit where they do on the table so it's their second half football that really gets them into the position that they are in this season i think what that also says is that the amount of patience and belief that melbourne city have in their style of play if if the first option isn't working then they need to improve on the first option rather than trying to change things up they play a very consistent style of play and they do it from the first minute all the way through to the 90th minute. Well, Steadfast too, they've all also stopped their opposition from scoring in the first half in 13 of those 20 games. So it really speaks to exactly what you've just mentioned there, Ish. But for now, they have a bit of defending to do. A victory on the charge, and it will be a free kick just outside the 18-yard box. Oof, what a dangerous area this is. Taylor Otto not really happy with that decision by Casey Rybelt, but this is a perfect position for someone like Emily Gilnick. See her walking over towards the ball. She's got both options here. For this angle, curling into the far post. Oh, it seemed like Taylor Otto won the ball there, but Casey Rybelt decided it's a Melbourne victory free kick. Well, the hands on the head immediately from Taylor Otto, and perhaps she has a case, held her ground. And it looks as though it may be Gilnick to take. A little word in the ear from Beatty Goad. Four people in the wall. Gilnick with the strike. Straight into the arms of Barbara. Doesn't challenge her. The pace on the strike was good, but straight down the middle. Well, I think Em was probably trying to dink that up and over the wall into this near post area. Just didn't catch it. I thought maybe uh, how she her run up towards the ball that angle of where she was going to strike it she was trying to keep her body quite open to give barbara the impression that she was going to the far post and maybe sneak that into the near post but just didn't catch it but barbara the experienced campaigner has probably faced a few of those free kicks in her time well look it was a good position i think the angle was good 
potentially it's right on the edge of the 18 yard box does it doesn't give you a lot of space it's fallen nicely to Ava Brightus good centering ball into the box desperation stakes Leah Privatelli who's copped a whack in the back of the head has stopped streamed forward and Rybelt, Rybelt has to stop this one immediately a head knock of course no malice meant there by Rebecca Stott just as she looked to run away the trailing leg it did look to clip the back of Maria Privatelli. Yeah, she looked like in a bit of discomfort straight away, didn't she? As soon as that happened, nice little cut back, Rebecca Stott. Yeah, just caught her with her knee, probably in the back of the head there. She was following through with her momentum. Yeah, a bit of a tangle between the two players, but quick to call things to a stop. Casey Rybelt, our centre referee today. Yeah, and it's crucial that all the referees as they know the concussion protocols are so strict these days and so they should be no risk taken when it comes to any head injuries head knocks see that knee that trailing knee of Rebecca Stott just into the back Privatelli well, Leah Privatelli such an important part of this victory side and one club one day, victory girl through and through and she's deployed in well whatever position she's needed in the time playing in the league she's played up front she's played in the midfield at times she's played defensively when called upon good to see her back to her feet and those types of players are crucial to your whole squad a real true out and out utility player that can just fit in anywhere fill a gap but also not just fill a gap but really add value when they are in any of those positions and it's uh, it's a pretty unique player that's able to do that this is a 93rd appearance today in the Liberty A League Leah Privatelli hopefully she'll be okay to continue as play gets back underway here at the home of the Matildas the last 15 minutes of regulation time we've ticked over into still a stalemate here neither side able to find the back of the net Jeff Hopkins digging a little deeper into his substitute so far just the one change we've seen for Dario Vidasic's side I mentioned a little earlier a couple of the players missing today with the young Matildas for victory Alana Murphy and Jess Nash and on the city side Daniela Galic Tian McKenna and Naomi Chinema, talented young group of players and what a fantastic achievement for their group and Leah Blaney over in their under 20 Asian Cup. Yeah, huge congratulations for their qualification to the under 20 World Cup later in the year and for coming third in that tournament. Yeah, a massive achievement for Australian football and for that group of players as well, I'm sure their clubs eager to have them back too. that pass just put in Otto under pressure but she's dealt with that well well she's been largely flawless this afternoon Taylor Otto looks really calm under pressure the city still stretching the field and trying to find a way out been largely the story this afternoon City throw. Wilkinson dropping deep to collect. She can turn and face. Possession just swinging slightly back in the favour of City. That matches the eye test too. A couple of slips on this side of the field we've seen across the course of the afternoon. Briley Henry can drive into space. She has Ekic outside. Nice little touches by Ekic, but two players who have been pretty sound all afternoon Jamila Rankin just goes to ground stretches out what looks to be a bit of cramp yeah there's been a couple of players BD Goat after she got brought down earlier on stretching her calves out sometimes on the pitch not just with the dehydration levels and the heat but also a firm pitch was well done again by Amina Eckert drawing that foul taking her on this is in a pretty handy position See Amina Ekic just trying to change the angle slightly of that ball there for this free kick. Probably a bit closer to the byline. 
a clever play, <laughs> clever by her, if uh, Casey Rybout allows that to well, stay where it is. That's smart. I mean, Ekic. The Americans, of course, she had four goals last season in six games before breaking her leg and then having to go through the recovery, returning to the States NWSL, but fantastic to see her back this season with City and, well, we've mentioned it a couple of times already, but she has been a standout today. Yeah, she's had a really good game today. I just really like that positivity. You know, those players who do have that pace, who are comfortable, and really balanced, you got to check in, check out, step overs as well makes it really uncomfortable for the defenders when they're facing you especially in and around that 18-yard box you don't want to be lunging putting your leg out and potentially giving away penalties it makes it very difficult to defend well Jamila Rankin is one of two victory players who have played all minutes alongside Kayla Morrison but lining up for this free kick victory with a bit of defending to do Amina Ekic one hand in the air Ekic, delivery into the box, nodded away by Hansen. First time strike is a little unconvincing. Courtney Newborn on her line. The glancing header off the back just fell gratefully into the hands of Newborn. And that's a nice, long, early delivery. End to end stuff here as Alex Chidiak is brought to ground. Well, Alex Chidiak asking for another foul. Briley Henry already on a yellow card. Asking the question of Casey Rybelt. Couldn't quite. That was a good ball in from Amina Ekic there. I thought that was going to sneak into the far post in what was a very crowded box. See Chids again. Uh, just a little nudge in the back. I mean, definite foul would have been harsh if there was a second yellow card. Well, just enough in the back there for Chidiak to go to ground, and it on this occasion will be Beatty Goad on her left foot to deliver. Numbers in the box. It's a nice ball in. Headed straight down and scooped away by Laura Hughes. Hansen has a little think about it. In fact, that was Rosie Curtis. Apologies. Nice switch of play. Substitutes combining. Here's Ava Brightus. Cuts in on the right. Center in pass to Chidiak. Closed down quickly. Players running into each other. A bit of miscommunication, but Chidiak looks forward again. Goad slips just at the point of delivery. And it's not the first time we've seen players go to ground on this side of the field. Yeah, I was saying before, Grace, I think sometimes when the pitch is quite hard, they have put a little bit of water on it, but you're actually, your studs can't get in when the, the ground is so firm, so you tend to actually slip off the top of it, particularly in these warmer conditions. He's Grosso. That calf is fit and firing, ready to go. Testing out Emma Checker. Cuts back in on her right. Dummies with the cross. Stops and props. Has a think about it. Now Hughes. McMahon. And Chidiak from one end of the field to the other is clipped. Just a little late there. I mean, what an epic amount of work Alex Chidiak has just gotten through there. Up around the 18-yard box, trying to create something around for the Melbourne victory attack and then back in defending right on the byline, getting cleaned up for good measure. Well, she certainly puts in the hard work. And just as she clears the ball away, just a little clip at the heel there. That was a clumsy challenge. Gives all the players a little bit of a breather. I don't think they'll be in any rush at the moment. Late into the game, warm conditions. Well, City can drive forward once again. Davidson, Hughes, little glance over the shoulder. Continues her run, Hughes. That's opened up really nicely. Gets a shot away. Doesn't have too much leverage or purchase behind it but the idea was right well i think it was ambitious from that far out there was plenty of space in front of davidson as well potentially could have taken another sorry laura hughes taken another touch on could have taken yeah maybe another little half a touch there well here's a chance for city wilkinson winds up or winds up and over throws her head back in frustration at herself more than anything 
That's kind of been the story of the match for Melbourne City. I think from what their expected goals could have been from chances, just not getting enough on target, just not asking the questions of Courtney Newborn in the Melbourne victory goal either. On the way back to Newborn. As we're well and truly into the final 10 minutes of play. Both sides just looking for an answer. That pass from Petey Goad, perhaps asking a little too much of substitute Ava Brightus on that occasion. The game's definitely getting stretched out now, aren't there? The bigger gaps there, a bit of fatigue setting in. Makes it tough with the decision making as well. You can see Melbourne victory not too keen to continue pressing too high they've got players there just holding their ground well they've persisted with playing out from the back haven't they pressure still being applied by gilnick and they almost get out a little interruption but play proceeds and city can stream forward once more long strides of shelby mcmahon releases grosso does get a shot away But the effort falls a little short. Yeah, I think I'd just like to see probably the percentage play there from Julia Grosso. Had Hannah Wilkinson in the box with one other defender. You know, she's got that stature. She likes finishing. She's a finisher. She's a natural finisher. I think she's better better option there from that position. She may disagree, was on the edge of the box. I mean, if she scores a worldly, I'm taking it all back, obviously. No complaints. <laughs> no right. complaints, exactly. Exactly. Well, still yet to be a goal in this fixture. Plenty of goals in the other fixtures, but don't turn away. This one still has time for an outcome. Riley Henry, nudged off the ball by Chidiak turns and streams forward Hughes coming in to do the tidy up work it's a solid shot solid shoulder rather nice little stop and prop by Hughes she's had a great game Ekic hugging the sideline Davidson now drags onto her left foot but shows Morrison too much of the ball victory just can't break this first line of City's high press Ekic through the legs of Rankin. Ekic can drive in. Ekic looking for the cutback. Amina Ekic dribbles that one over the line. Courtney Newborn remonstrating. She thought it was a goal kick. Well, good work from Amina Ekic again. Just wanted to take it that extra touch she got around Kayla Morrison she just couldn't collect her feet credit to Kayla Morrison actually she actually did really well there to get that tackle in last ditch I thought Hannah Wilkinson was for me in a great position for Ekic to just pass that ball back to for a shot on goal short corner it was nipped away by Alex Chidiat Julia Grosso the option well, the whistle, as it will be, some other substitutes we see for the afternoon. And that will be the last we see of Amina Ekic for the day after a host of work she's gotten through. And as a result, Kira Myers, a 16-year-old, making her eighth appearance for Melbourne City. But Amina Ekic, well, she would have loved to finish off a goal given her hard work today but still victory with some defending to do the turn the first time effort from Shelby McMahon her starting debut today for City it's a lofted shot easy pickings for Newborn yeah I'm surprised I mean obviously Dario Vidisic has his reasons to take off Amina Ekic I would have kept her on personally I think she still looked dangerous in those wide positions maybe she was just running out of gas there maybe he wants to play the conservative approach and make sure they don't concede late on but I think she had a wonderful game and just looks so dangerous in those wide areas taking on the Melbourne victory defenders certainly looked like the most likely outlet now Privatelli great to see her return from that head knock brightest 
First time delivery. Brightus again will get another bite. Chidiak. The dying minutes of this game, Alex Chidiak releases Privatelli. First time cross, blocked. Bit of help to Skelter in the box, and that one's clipped the side of the head of Taylor Otto. Immediately head into the hands. Good quality of that cross by Privatelli as well. Kept it low on the ground into that six yard box area, which is really dangerous. Defenders running back towards goal makes it easier for the victory attackers to run onto. And Taylor Otto, Taylor Otto has had another. She's played really well today, hasn't she? Just looked really solid. Getting in here, nice ball to the face, continues on. <laughs> well, she's copped the full brunt of that, hasn't she? <laughs> but she has had a fantastic game. Really sound at the back and she may indeed be called into action another time here as victory line up for a corner. Beatty go to take. Swept into the box. Shouts for a handball, perhaps. Goad again. Nice little jink by Goad. Delivery in. It's up well by Gilnick. A little glancing header and, oh, that was always so close by Emily Gilnick. Yeah, it was well done by Beatty Goad. On that left-hand side, just a little jink. Get past Otto again. In good position, tough header. Emily Gilnick just trying to glance it into that far post area. Just couldn't get enough on it. Well, the fresh legs of 16-year-old Kira Myers for City. She's happy to chase that. Alex Chidiak, happy to keep working hard. We have confirmation that there will be seven minutes of stoppage time. And that's plenty of time. Certainly, is, especially when you were talking before, Grace, about Melbourne City and how they just continue with that process, continue playing with the same style of play. See this, Rebecca Stott stepping in, trying to make something happen. Stoddy releasing Wilkinson. Now Myers looks for the cross, tries to return the ball to Wilkinson. Myers, the youngster, will chase down to try and make amends for the pass. Gets herself back behind the ball, has done well. Little jink again by Betty Goad. And she has done well there to find a pass to Chidiak. Numbers forward, ideas right, awkward one. Barbara in two minds. Just starting to build for victory here. They've got a bit of momentum. Well, I thought maybe Alex Chidiak hadn't quite played that at the right angle. Barbara not happy, not happy at all. Not a look you want to be on the end of, certainly, Ish. <laughs> no, that's right. She came out as a bit of indecisiveness, wasn't there? Cleared it out. I thought Emily Gilnick was going to nick in front there. It, looked, it was quite deceiving from this angle. It kind of looked like it held up a little bit. I thought oh, Barbara would have had it for sure. Well, a little tricky to read, but you might have to have a bit more work to do here. Emily Gilnick with a good, positive first touch. First time effort. No numbers in the box. No victory shirts to play with goes for the dink yeah i mean we've seen em try and score though she scored some great goals in recent times and i think that was the right she had no support up there with her she was on her own she had a little bit of space looked like a decent angle barbara coming on forward towards the ball i think that was the right option but again just the execution not quite up to the standard she would have liked well, wilkinson applying the high pressure on newborn who plays out coolly now Curtis does well to evade the challenge. Rosie Curtis, the 19-year-old, releasing Chidiak. Definitely a little bit of a buzz about victory streaming forward at the moment. Ball into the box from Goad, interrupted by Otto. Davidson connects with McMahon, who prior to today Appearances off the bench, totaling 50 minutes of football. Looks as though she's getting through her first 90 this afternoon. The 15-year-old. Here she is on the ball. Shelby McMahon. Ross Backen. Releases Hughes. This combination, one from way back. Ball into the box. Searching for the head of Kira Myers. Only as far as glancing over the line for a goal kick. Well, it's a tidy bit of combination play on that left-hand side. It really has been the strength of Melbourne City for this whole game. They're attacking Carly Rossback and just trying to dink it into the far post there. Kind of curl that one around a little bit. Just a little bit too high for Kira Myers. Long clearing goal kick. 
from Newborn. That's off the top of the head of go. Well, don't switch it over because it's half time, but I can tell you that at the Central Coast Mariners Canberra United game, it is 4 0 to the Mariners. <laughs> wow. Well. What a, a strong message that Central Coast is sending at this stage of the season, aren't they? Indeed they are. Here's Wilkinson. Hughes. Back to Wilkinson. She can face forward. That pass a little wasteful by Wilkinson and City players having to scrap for possession. Brightus combining well against again with Chidiak but passes not quite sticking at the moment for either side no nonsense challenge there by Hughes he's brightest on the ground McMahon the ball a little straight the idea right by the youngster yep, just starting to see that little drop in quality in this additional time strong challenge in here Laura Hughes there you go thank you very much Continue on. Well, it does not take a backward step, Laura Hughes. Well read by Ross Bakken. Grosso, the substitute. Tracked smartly by Emma Checker. It's anticipated a little too easily, the straight ball. Rebecca Stott, she's just looking for options forward. Needs a city shirt. Finds McMahon. Back to Stott. Chipped over the top. Handy little ball here. Grosso again needing a city shirt. Doesn't have the support. Bridus. Privatelli. She's a player who can make things happen. Here's Gilnick. Needing victory numbers in the box. None to be seen. Just city blue. Yeah, I think that was a good, a, a good decision by M. Gilnick. Privatelli continued her run into the centre of the box, but I think well, she was looking for the corner there. She had her head up. She had good vision here. Privatelli, nice and positive. Continued her run. Look at her just sprinting in. Not too many options. Difficult. Carly Ross Backen did well defensively there. I think it was clever play from Emily Gilnick just to win the corner. Oh, victory. Desperate to make something of this corner. Five and a half minutes elapsed of the allotted seven minutes of stoppage time. 90 seconds remain. Two hands in the air, Alex Chidiak. Corner whipped in. It's a big, long, sweeping one. It did fall to Emma Checker, almost unmarked at the far post. Yeah, I think Casey Rybelt seen an infringement in and around. There was plenty of bodies again. Both teams really trying to just dump it right on the head of the goalkeeper. Lots of players around. Last 60 seconds. A little too heavy handed in the side there by Gilnick. And City will look to move quickly. Hughes getting things underway. Ross Backen. Looks forward, but it's read well by Checker. 30 seconds remain. <gasps> I wonder if Jeff is, is urging the fourth official to call time on this one. Wilkinson, can she find a pass? Checker interrupts. 15 seconds remain, surely. The last play as Casey Robout takes a little glance at the watch. Well, they'll need to move quickly here. One last roll of the dice. City throw. Back with Ross Backen. Releases Grosso. A little indecision. And that one rolls harmlessly over the line. And there is the full time whistle. And so the Melbourne Derby finishes a point apiece between Melbourne Victory and Melbourne City. They're both still sitting pretty in the top six with just two games to be played of the regular season. But the result can't be separated here this afternoon at the home of the Matildas as it's victory nil, City nil.
Well, there were no goals, Ish, but we were entertained. Yeah, it was a fair result, I think, in the end. It was a, a well-fought match by both teams. There was a couple of chances. I thought Amina Ekic had a wonderful game. Loved her positivity, loved taking on. I really thought Hannah Wilkinson sort of slid in at that far post and it would have been a goal from Melbourne City. Bit of a mistake here from them playing out the back. Doesn't happen very often. Emily Gilnick, when she was pushed into a bit more of a central position, just couldn't quite catch it. But I think both teams, I think it was a fair result. Both teams had a couple of chances. There was a couple of shots that hit the woodwork. And also those balls across goal, which just went begging for both of these teams. Well, certainly a result they would have both liked to have found. It wasn't to be today, not through lack of effort, lack of trying, but perhaps just lacking some quality in the final third. As I have a quick glimpse at the full-time match stats and possession was largely as it was for the entirety of the game but what can you see each across the course of the 90 minutes well i think the stats kind of speak for themselves i think as you said grace it passes the eye test i think it was relatively evenly matched it was some quality football out there and just neither team being able to break the deadlock well we wrap up here at the home of the matildas a point of peace between these melbourne sides and from all the team here each ferguson and myself grace gill many thanks for tuning in this afternoon remember dub zone is back tonight 8 30 p.m on 10 plate we'll see you soon